Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Arcanium Rise of Akan. We are about to dive in against the final boss in this adventure, the boss battle Aranax, the Blue Queen. And there's a little text here to read along with her. So, it says, Strung from the shard to every tree within sight are thick strands of webbing that glow with a dull, unnatural color. The webs strum like cacophonous instruments conducted by a deaf composer. Causing the pulsing appears causing the pulsing appears to be massive exacts pulsing, making the webs which reaching out from it shiver. It's tough to avoid stepping on any of the webbing, but as you approach the shard, intent on destroying it, you hear sound from above. Jumping back just in time to avoid being crushed by the massive titanous form of Aranox the Brook Queen. She shrieks and clicks at you, a sound of suffering that stabs at your ears, and this voice I cannot do, I think, but I i guess I'll try. My webs were perfect before you came into them. Everything was close to its end, every animal where they needed to be for Anador to fall. You horrible little flies are nothing to me, yet you trouble me so. The venom dripping from her fangs bores holes in the ground where it lands puffing out small clouds of haze. You make a mental note to watch out for that in the battle to come as she continues her tirade. Tirade? <laughs> I made allowances for the wardens, but you, you came from outside my webs, and now you are in them. It is time to feed you to the corruption. Your lives, as you know them, are at an end, but you will soon be a beautiful additions to my plan. Relics ready, your favorite abilities prepped, potions on the belt. It is time to end the corruption in Anador at its source. Aranax drags her webs towards with, forward with her, but you feel as ready as you can be. The battle starts and ends here. Fight! Fools! Did you really think you could come into my forest and kill my children? Does anyone else want them this middle lane, please? Oh, so she starts in the field. Oh, this is really cool. This is like a specific boss fight scenario, not just like other game fights. Look at that. Aranax extends life tethers to her living nest allies. Each turn, she will heal herself by siphoning up to four, up to a max of ten HP from each of the nests, thus damaging the nests. <laughs> no lane is safer from us. Prepare yourself to be dinner. All right. Interesting. And so what happens when she they died? Immovable passive cannot be moved. She's got a boss passive. This villain cannot be affected by crop control. Life tether. In the beginning of each turn, absorb 10 health from each of the adjacent hatching nests. Okay. Um, And she doesn't have any resistances, it seems. That's nice. I think I will place Milady here. And you know why. You know why. Uh, maybe not. I'm assuming that hitting the nests actually makes a, a, a some amount of sense in killing them, and both Aaron Ragnarok and Leon have better cleave abilities, so that's probably what we should be thinking about here, just cleaving as much as we can. Emilady can be stabbing at the hatching nest, but when she's ready to do her big combo thing, she will pounce to the center zone in order to uh, do the maximum damage that she can do, right? So we want her on the side first. Start the battle. Okay, and the, the hatching nests are doing stuff. They are going to be spawning enemies, probably. Yes, summon a broodling, block, promote, instant, apply two poison forward to the target. Promote, what does promote do? Minions with promote will kill, then absorb the attack from any min- Ah, like we do with Ragnarok, right. And over here, it, they also attack Viscous Prison, uh, applying Root. But we don't care about Root as much because we are mostly moving through teleports and pounces. So this is fine. All right. We've got Pummels. We've got Static Fury with Resolve on it. Okay. Here's the Debilitate, Barrel Roll, Murky Strike. Uh-huh. two combo points. We can get the debilitate to do uh, vulnerable on Aranax is what I'm thinking by pouncing over barrel rolling back 
and we can even pummel her from here. We can also apply Vulnerable in advance with the Splash, and that would make it um, so that she has Vulnerable for multiple turns in, a, in the future, right? So we are going to pummel here first to get a reduction on the Static Fury, and then do that little thing, and then pummel over here. Boom, like that. What's she doing? Cleanse all debuffs. Okay, so that was useless. <laughs> but she's going to do that at the end of her turn. Cleanse all debuffs on herself. Yes, so not on her ex. Uh, but now I added vulnerable. Oh, here. Right. Um, mm -mm -mm. Could we somehow get another stack here? No. We are definitely doing fleet food at this turn, by the way. Hounds will draw another card, but she's going to be out of actions. So maybe we save the pounds instead. Hmm. This is a lot of damage, and that's nice. And it doesn't matter if I pounce on this one to get more stack to get, make the debilitate do vulnerable because she's gonna cleanse those debuffs. So stop thinking about it. Um, <laughs> I should. Should I use the vicious strike? I don't think so. I will debilitate, of course, because it's just a huge attack. If I barrel roll, though, then the Vicious Strike here becomes better, and so I will do it. That's a lot of damage. Leave it at that. Grr. Okay, no sound effects with that. That's fine. Hatch Brutling. Yeah, another Brutling coming out. This one is doing the Viscous Prison. Mm-hmm. And then we've got Toxic Cloud here. Lop Enchant 2. Uh, reduce the target's hand size by 1. Apply 3 poison at the start of each turn. Ooh. Okay. That is kind of nasty. Now we've got the Cheap Shot. We've got the Barrel Roll. We've got a Fierce Roar here. Oh, so if I barrel roll, look at this, look at this, this is going to be good. We want to barrel roll over to Leon so that he can use his Crusader Strike and Fierce Roar for cheaper. He is rooted, cannot, can't drag swap with heroes, yeah. I wonder what happens when we kill a hatchling nest. Hmm, and this one has already poisoned but will be attacking every turn with four damage of course okay oh and she has defense huh not sure where she's getting the defense from maybe she did something last turn that gave her defense okay um they're not doing direct damage which is kind of interesting so all of my defense doesn't really work i would like the fierce roll to be in the center but i don't think that we are getting that Barrel roll like that, then Fierce Roar is for free, uh, allowing a card draw for both Milady and himself, so we should use a card first. She could pounce over here, and then the Fierce Roar would then be allowed in the center, gaining power. He also needs to spend a card first, so he's doing Crusader Strike, k killing the minion. That's... Is that fine? This is so tricky. We also have Tail Lash, which is great. Of 
course we're doing this. Uh, and then... This is tricky. We can do Blade Storm this turn if we want with a cheap shot. And we have the Fierce Roar. Oh, he should have Judgment killed that one and then cleaved. Dang it. Now we clear this. Oh, we need to draw or, or yeah, use another card here. Let's hear. Let's test this. Does this draw a card? Yes. Even if you pound to the same zone. Okay. Does she strike? No. Pounds first. Then the will wind. I'm thinking about maybe that maybe I should fierce roar before we will wind here. Even though it kind of loses us a card draw, getting the extra damage on this one seems more interesting. Fierce Raw. Oh, she... She got up to four cards. Did not think that was possible. Alright. Uh, this will deal double damage to targets with more... Yeah, so this does 40. But well, this one will do 20. And kill this one over here. Then the Blade Storm, 60 damage, and then a good old cheap shot for 38. My lord, me lady, you show no mercy. Um, judgment, do we keep the judgments or do we shuffle one out into the Fury Meter? It's going to reduce the Fury by two, and he can use the healing. It's gonna reduce his hand size by one here, huh? Yeah, let's have let's have him use the judgment. So there's respawning. This one's respawning in two turns, it says. Interesting. In one turn. Oh. Oh look at that. They did not respawn immediately. And I wonder if you keep hitting them, is that gonna delay the respawning? I feel like that's maybe what happened. Viscous Poison? Oh wow, we are slaughtering this boss. No worries, man. Oh, I should have done the Flask of Destruction last turn. I forgot. We will Dagger Throw. Uh, this will heal. So might as well. Do the damage. Do the damage. Hmm. We did not delay the spawnings, uh, respawnings more by hitting those. Uh, uh, this one comes in damage, or did she just steal heal, uh, heal from it? I think she just stole heal from it, so that's probably what happened. This one's hatching, and she's doing an Acid Barrage with Cleave. Multi Strike 3, deal 5 damage in the Cleave, okay. So 15 to the whole group, unless we can do something about it. Which I don't think we can. So, like the ultimate from Leon here would be great. Uh, we could of course just try to kill her. Crusader Strike... It's cheaper if we go into the center to use it. Why would that matter? Because then we can judgment on her too. Nah. Not worth it. Murky strike. 
Oh, he's rooted now. So the rooting, that's kind of interesting because they this they teleport swapped and so now Rock Ragnarok teleported himself into the root. Interesting. Uh yeah. I thought it would follow Leon that and because he was the one who was rooted, right? So hmm. That's interesting. Oh, we could use the Aegis Potion, that's helpful. And it probably doesn't matter too much because we are about to win here. Soonish anyway. Uh Like that. Two. These will not help at all. So we could use one of them to get it out of the hand. That did build the ultimate. Okay, Blade Storm then. Then a Vicious Strike. And then a Cheap Shot. Let's just use the potion. 13 times combo. Let's use the potion. And we are doing the judgment here. Still taking a lot of damage, but we'll be fine. Should have summoned this unit in the center, of course. It's kind of wasteful here. Now it's going to do some work again. Good. What do we got? What do we got? Here's the pounds, but we don't have the enchant anymore. Too bad. She's doing impale with shield steel. Okay, and we're gonna deny that with the shield toss, so no worries. Got the moon caller, which can get rid of the poison here. He's not rooted anymore. We can put pounds and vault strike. That's really nice. Hamstring, perseverance, and shield toss. You come in here, Leon. Give the hamstring. Do a little uh, of that perseverance, but first give Lady Milady a uh, a shield. Double healing. If you are ah, he's the one who needs to be affected by the immune to do the double healing. I think she's not gonna heal double. Not that it matters. Uh, then you come in, Rock and Rock. Do the Elder Mooncaller, getting rid of your own poison, doing attack command. Then the lady, she will pounce back in, do a vicious, no, sorry, a wall strike, and then a vicious strike for the lethal. And the ultimate is also ready, by the way. <laughs> Final blow. Ah, no, my forest, my children. Even with all this delicious power, I failed. Wait. I feel so strange, like I've been living in a dream. Oh, she's gonna play the, oh no, I was mind controlled card. Let me join your team now. <laughs> Green my worm tongue. Anyway, forgive me. I was too weak to defense against the corruption. Thank you. I didn't know what I was doing. You were seduced by the unholy power of Akan and the Apex. While you were blinded with war power, you allow the corruption to strangle the life from this place. You tell her, milady. Now that you're free, and without the vile corruption spreading across this land, uh, Anador will return to its former glory. One step closer to crushing Akan, his power is weakened now that Anador is no longer under his control. So that was a really easy fight. Kind of disappointed, <laughs> but I'm sure when we start turning up the difficulty, which we will do at the first opportunity, then stuff should be a little bit more interesting. We get 20 Anador stones out of that. Okay. Thanks for playing. After a well-fought battle, Aranax collapses to the ground on moving. Strands of web billowing away. Let me turn down the music a bit here. I can't barely hear myself. Strands of wet billowing away, disappearing into the dark undergrowth. Her hulking form begins to show signs of life as the corruption recedes from her body. You have defeated the former protector, turned blight of Anador, and a small portion of the balance is restored to Arsu. As you return to the inn, you gather the your thoughts and plan your next move. 
The forest seems lighter, cleaner, and all signs of the corruption have abated and the weight is off your shoulder. But there is still more to be done. Reports pour in from neighboring provinces that corruption has taken root and the shards of Umbra cannot be defeated. A queasy feeling sits in. It seems that like Akan has won and all hope is lost despite your best efforts. The feeling in your gut intensifies and your vision begins to blur. You blink attempting to blot out the light overpowering your eyes but to no avail. There are no leads to where Arkan is, but to save Asu and restore the balance of the world he must be stopped. The thought creeps into your head as if it were there already. The figures of the spirits materialize before you, or you before them. Akan has grown too powerful and the corruption too strong. It will be up to you to seek out allies and gain access to the other provinces to prevent the cataclysm befalling Asu. Begone, return to your beginnings and save Asu. Balance must be restored. Congratulations, you completed the current early access version of Akanium. Oh really? Much more is coming. During early access, we will be adding four new heroes for Anador, along with four heroes per province, across two new provinces coming in the next several months. Then Akan himself will finally be ready to battle your team. Stay tuned to the game as it progresses through the development process. The tiny team here at Super Combo is so thrilled to have been able to share you with you this the flagship title. You brought, you'll be brought back to the main menu where you can start a new run, continue unlocking artifacts in Anador and new abilities for your heroes. See if you have what it takes to defeat Aranax on the harder difficulties. Alright. Well, I was hoping that we could keep playing, but we will probably just start playing again on a higher difficulties to unlock some stuff and such. What do we have here? 1%, 4%, Thorn Guard. And a Dorian bow. Oh, we are unlocking some different skills for for the different characters. That's cool. So there's going to be replayability even in playing in the same character with the same characters again, or we can play with other heroes. Exit. So uh, I'm I'm going to go and dip quickly into the menu here. 9.8%. So there's more difficulties next time. We'll be playing on hard, obviously. Uh, and my question to you uh, watching at home then would be... No, no, no. Okay. Uh, whatever. Now, now I clicked easy or no, normal difficulty, but whatever. Um, if there's any specific heroes that you would like to see in play, that, that let me know. We would probably... I'm probably just going to start one with Angon, Aurora, and Tara just to see what's different for those just see all the different characters and then if we would want uh, to see a specific combination after the fact can we do anything here like to heirlooms it unlocks at level eight i see okay overview i'm just seeing trying to see if we can like uh, spend these anador stones it did say that that would come later in development so maybe it's just not present yet like we've, we've unlocked some cards for Ragnarok then. So sneak attack. I wonder then, is he just going to have those new cards when we start up a new run or what? And there's so many that have been unlocked now that we didn't see before. But these are not. Ah, these are the two new ones that have been unlocked. And they're still like all the way up to level 19. So many cards still to unlock. So I feel like there's a lot of playability. Oh, look at this. This is the. This looks a lot like the tiger from Kung Fu Panda. I'm. I was really looking forward to playing the the ancient wise turtle here. He seems to be one of the few with this uh, hex symbol, which I was also kind of hoping to explore a little bit more. Ragnarok was one of them. Um, then we have another over here, Maverick. <laughs> If I have to guess who's like a proper mage, that's probably Aurora. Yes, he seems like a fire wizard, pyromancer. That sounds really cool. So I'm looking forward to that. 
But anyway, that's it for now, folks. I hope you all enjoyed the initial playthrough of uh, Arcanium. This time it'll be more faster paced, I think, and less story focused as we play another run against Aranax again. So look forward to that coming soon. Probably just starting it tomorrow, because why not? So see you then, folks, and bye-bye.